Do you want to know everything about the three types of carrageenan and its controversy? Get the carrageenan primer and lots of recipes today on WTF. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, the owner of Modernist Pantry. Today, Scott and I are going to be talking about carrageenan, or carrageenan, depending on how you want to say it. So we're going to do an entire pr primer on carrageenan. So we're going to talk about what it is, what they do, how do you use it, and then we're going to have a couple of really cool demos. So definitely stick around for the entire video because this one is, is it's a journey. It's not a quick ride on, <laughs> on here. So let's first start off with, you know, we carry three different types of carrageenan. Mm -hmm. What are they and what are some of the differences between them? So we have three different types, like you said. We have kappa, iota, and lambda. Mm -hmm. And they are gelling agents and a thickener from algae. So very similar to like an agar or whatnot. But they okay. do have different properties and they give different textures. Mm -hmm. Uh, between the types and from something like an agar. Yeah, so let's kind of break them down one at a time. So let's first start with kappa. What is what exactly is um you know what type of gelling does kappa do and how do sure. you use it? So kappa provides a clear brittle gel. Okay. So uh, something you may be able to equate this to is gelatin. Mm -hmm. It's clear when you look at it, and when you go to cut into it, it kind of splits or splinters, right? Yeah. That's a brittle gel. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we'll just go to iota. Yep. It is so a right opaque here. or cloudy mm -hmm. soft gel. So it's almost when you go to cut it, it kind of uh, compresses and it'll be able to spread. Mm -hmm. So that gives you a very different type of gel than a kappa. Right. And then lambda is more of a thickening agent. And mm -hmm. lambda is used primarily for dairy or uh, soy and nut milks to kind of give a proper mouthfeel. So mm -hmm. it gives a creaminess without having to add any extra calories or cream or, or fats to it. Yeah, so if you're looking, thinking about using carrageenan, the, the big question you want to ask yourself is what type of effect you're trying to achieve, yes. right? And you can't really use them interchangeably, so mm -hmm. you have to kind of know ahead of time. Um, and when we do, people do want to start using carrageenan, what's, um, you know, the basics of hydration temperature, you know, how do they yeah. get it in there? So, um, you want to take carrageenan, uh, and you want to heat it at least to 185 degrees. Okay. So just below a boiling point, if you bring it to a boil, that's totally fine. It okay. doesn't matter if it goes over that, mm -hmm. but you want to make sure that it gets heated and that's the hydration temperature. You can blend it in all you want, mm -hmm. but it needs to be above 185 degrees Fahrenheit mm -hmm. for it to then cool and at around 160 degrees Fahrenheit, it'll start to gel. Right. Yep. Okay, and is that true for all three of them or? Just the two jelling ones. So, okay. so it's true for the two jelling ones. Okay. Good question. It's good for uh, kappa carrageenan or iota carrageenan. Like I said earlier, the lambda is just thickening. Mm -hmm. So if you take it, and we're going to do it right here in, in um, this demo of eggnog that we do, mm -hmm. it's already mixed in with our eggs and our sugar, and then we're going to add in some hot cream, and that's only just to temper the eggs. You don't have to bring it up to a okay. temperature afterwards. It's going to thicken. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, it's easier to do than a traditional eggnog, which you'd have to blend, right. then heat again, then cool, which we can just blend it in there. It tempers the eggs while the hot milk goes in, and then we have a really beautiful consistency. Yeah, and one of the things, I think you brought up this point when you and I were talking off camera that I thought was really valuable is that a lot of times when people are cooking on the stovetop and they are adding a hydrocolloid like kappa or iota to gel, mm -hmm. and they, they're they're wondering why it's not gelling properly, or they're like, my gel's too soft, or my gel is just not setting, uh, but I think I have it at the right temperature. So what, do you, yeah. what is typically going on? So there? a lot of people will uh, mm -hmm. stick a thermometer down and it, it's really close to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Well, that bottom layer may be at, we'll just say 185 degrees, the proper right. gelling temperature, mm -hmm. or they, they don't even use a thermometer. They look at it, they see a few bubbles come up. They think the entire mixture is there. Mm -hmm. They stop their cooking process, but the top can be at 160 degrees. Right. So you have to really make sure that you're stirring and it comes either to a full boil or, you know, or you have a very precise, you know, instant read thermometer mm -hmm. or something like a control freak from PolyScience where right. you can really measure the temperature of the entire uh, batch that you're doing. So you want to make sure it's mm -hmm. heated properly all the way through before you take it off because a lot of people, we get questions like, oh, uh, my vegan cheese isn't working, right. which uh, Kappa is a huge um, component of a lot of different vegan cheeses. Mm -hmm. So if you take that 
and you don't heat it properly, you're going to end up with a vegan cheese spread as opposed right. to a meltable, you know, sliceable vegan cheese. Yeah, and then kind of question people think that it's because either they didn't use enough carrageenan mm -hmm. or that there's something wrong with the carrageenan when it's really just kind of uh, making sure that it's properly heated. Yeah, and that's a good thing. I generally tell people if you take, um, you know, 100 grams or you know a few ounces of water and you sprinkle a little carrageenan in it you mix it well so mm -hmm. that's another thing if you're going to mix it mix it in a blender mix it with okay. a hand blender make sure it's either dispersed in some sort of sugar or other dry ingredient okay. it's just going to help it from clumping yep you take that mm -hmm. you bring it to a boil let it set and if it completely gels your cap is fine. Mm -hmm. It may be you know somewhere else uh, that the issues are happening it's either too acidic which is Another thing we can talk about with right. all these hydrocolloids, mm -hmm. Kappa isn't the biggest fan of acidity. Right. If it goes below a 4 pH, mm -hmm. uh, the same with iota, if it goes below that 4 pH, they don't really like to gel up. Mm -hmm. So you either have to buffer it or you can add the acidity later, which a lot of people like to do with vegan cheeses. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of little things to know about it. And we do have a uh, chart so people can yes. check it out on our blog mm -hmm. uh, that talk about all the different carrageenans and uh, you know, kind of how to maneuver your way around because they are finicky, mm -hmm. so you can get them right. Yeah, and then on that chart, we'll also have like usage ratios, <clears throat> making sure, just reiterating the hydration temperature, dispersion technique. So that, that yes. information will all be available. Um, so, you know, since we're actually just talking about vegan cheese, do we want to start jumping into a couple of our demos here? Yeah, sure. Okay, so, so we did talk about vegan cheese, and we can probably talk about this, uh, the vegan Munster we have, and we have a recipe for it um, on our blog. And we do have three kits of vegan cheese, but this is a, a kind of slightly different and kind of a shout out to Chef Sky, who this recipe is from. Uh, he's, a, he's a good uh, he's you know, fan of ours, <laughs> and we're a fan of his, and he does some really amazing you know, uh, things with vegan cheeses, all yep. different types of vegan um, recipes to mm -hmm. mimic, you know, yeah. you know, everything from beef to fish to cheese. So Yep, and we actually do have a WTF episode that we did about um, our vegan cheese yes. kit, so check that out. But this particular monster, re monster recipe is not part of that WTF, but it will be available on the blog, so if you do want to make that. So this is one of um, Chef Sky's recipes. It's wonderful, mm -hmm. and it uses the Capra Caragina. So, yeah, if you want to give it a try. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could also take that recipe and then mess around with it and try something new for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have, so our recipe here, I'd like to kind of talk about. Let's do that, the we holiday can get into season. Our, yeah, the holiday, holiday season's drinks. here. So we can turn on our blender. Wait, wait, before we do that, what are we making here? Oh, well, I was gonna talk about it. Yeah. But yes, it is, okay. it is the eggnog, the like, eggnog that we had mentioned before. Okay. So it is egg yolk, okay. carrageenan uh, lambda, or lambda carrageenan, mm -hmm. and uh, sugar in there. Okay. So. That's the main ingredients that I want in here. And then my milk mixture over here, which is hot, or at least it was hot when we began, but that's totally fine. So this just has, you know, the infused spices. It's got some clove, it's got some nutmeg. A cinnamon stick was in there. I've taken all those out. You can still see pieces of the, you know, little bits of the nutmeg. That's good, because you want to be able to see it. And it, this is nice and warm. So as you can see, this is already starting to get nice and creamy. You see how it's changed color from that really yep. yellow to kind of a more creamy custard yeah. yellow. So I'm gonna slowly add in my milk. Get this going. So once I pour this in, it's just like a normal tempering. Uh, usually you do this with a whisk and, and a bowl. I'm just gonna use a blender here because it's really easy and it helps activate that carrageenan. So that lamb is starting to absorb some of the milk and it's gonna start thickening it right away. The only issue with this is that you may get a little bit of air bubbles on top. Okay. With that, you can scoop them off or you can pass them through a, a super bag and it'll knock down those air bubbles. So it's very simple. So we're just gonna keep pouring this in. You can get this recipe on the blog as well. Yes, yep. Just finish that one up and it should be up very soon if it's not already up. So boom. And you can see there's a beautiful consistency. I might pop this top off so we can get a good look at how that, it almost looks like a uh, ice cream base. It's so beautiful. It sure does. Very custardy. So I'm going to turn that off so we can actually hear hot. again. Ooh. Yeah, it's still, still nice and warm. So mm -hmm. you can serve this directly out of here. Mm -hmm. Over time, it should slight not, or slightly thicken up a little bit more mm -hmm. because that's how Lambda works. It doesn't work immediately in here. Over a little bit of time, it'll start to absorb and thicken a little bit more. Okay. Totally so, fine. Right. So if you make it and you're like, it's not where I want to be, don't put in more Lambda, just give it a yeah, little exactly. bit of time. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. You could keep blending it as well mm -hmm. if you want to let it blend for 10 minutes. I don't necessarily find there's any benefit to that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, over time, and I'm talking about 
about a very small amount. It's not going to thicken up, you know, to the point of where it's pudding, but it right. could do a little bit more. And then we get right here, we can see we have a beautiful eggnog that we made earlier, and I'll pour it into this cup for me. We also have a second demo that we're going to be doing. Isn't that right, Janie? This one you're kind of excited about because you've I know. had this before. So Why are you talking about that? I Let's know, just give I this a little... I can't do the eggnog because of the dairy. <laughs> So it is, that's a proper eggnog. Yeah, proper eggnog. And yeah, and there's actually rum on the recipe too. So a little mm -hmm. bit of rum can go in there. It mixes in beautifully. I did try it this the other day. Like I couldn't really drink it, but I had a little sip and the rum really like, for, at least for me, it really brought out like a strong vanilla flavor. Yep. Super good. But then I had to stop so I don't die. Delicious, mm -hmm. delicious. Can I have that little plate right there? Absolutely. So the next demo is? Vegan flan. <gasps> So a lot of the recipes I see online use um, cornstarch to make vegan yeah. flan. Or agar, right? yeah. yeah, or agar, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And agar can give a really um, off-putting texture. It's mm -hmm. a bit too chewy, it's a bit too brittle. Yep. So when you're taking these ingredients, uh, like an iota or a kappa, you can kind of find a good balance between the two. And with our vegan gelatin, which we use in this flan, it's a proprietary right blend that makes things, uh, you can replace it one-to-one -one for actual um, gelatin. So yep. if you have a recipe that is uh, for Knox gelatin mm -hmm. or for a you know powdered gelatin that, or even sheet gelatin, yep. if you're doing it by weight, you can then take the vegan gelatin and replace it by weight. Yep. It's one-to-one -one replacement. The one thing you don't want to do is try and bloom it like a traditional gelatin right. because it's not. It's it's a hydrocolloid. So you mm -hmm. want to blend it just like I said with the other carrageenan. Yeah, so just like the kappa and the iota and lambda, the dry yeah. blend and not the, uh, no. Yeah, and I don't, found don't that this... Don't try to squeeze it out with water. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. found that this has a really almost creamy texture too. So did a little playing around with it and I was able to make a beautiful vegan flan recipe that... If you've ever made flan, usually you have to bake it in the oven. It's a baked custard. Mm -hmm. You have to make the, the caramel. This one... If you make it, and you can have it in a few hours if you just do it perfectly, uh, I like to let it sit for a little bit longer because I like a lot of that mm -hmm. caramel sauce to come out of it. Yeah. So I put it into a mason jar. It's just really easy for storing. You can put it into whatever container you want, and I just simply go around the outside. And you can see it's already starting to pull apart. Mm -hmm. The best thing you want to do here is not try and flop it out, but invert, flip it over. Ooh. It may take a little bit. Sometimes I have to get in there with my spatula again, make a little air bubble. There Very we go. Perfect. Yes. So this is a great dish. Um, I don't know if it's, I feel like I've been eating a lot of sweets on camera, <laughs> but I do have a total sweet tooth. And I love this flan because it tastes exactly like. Yeah, you wouldn't, you like would not be able to egg. tell. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. Like it's hard to describe. So we're just going to like live scoop it here so that you can kind of see how it separates. Yes. and. The best part about this is you're never going to get that flan that gets overcooked and gets gritty. So you're always going to have that nice, beautiful, yeah, creamy so flan. Yeah, so look how nice that is. It just separates with an agar or like some other oops jelling agent. It's just going to all fall apart. Yep. So it's creamy, custardy, just like a traditional flan would be. Mm, so good. It yes. is so good. Great. So and definitely the recipes on the blog for this one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of that recipe. When mm -hmm. I made it, it took a lot of kind of tinkering to get it right because mm -hmm. flan is a great thing when it's uh, you know done properly. And obviously, with a vegan alternative, you want it to be just as good, if not better. So mm -hmm. yeah. So you know, if you want to download all these resources, they're all available up on the blog. Um, we're gonna try to do like a couple of mini videos maybe on some of these. So and if you do want to see us do more like recipe type videos or shorter form videos. Mm -hmm or any other type of videos, like leave comments yeah. and, and mail in because so that, you know, if there's demand for it, we'll definitely do it. You say mail in? I love it, yeah. <laughs> mail in, mail, Send some snail us, mail yeah. here to Modernist Pantry. Yeah, Handwritten letters, please, <laughs> yeah. or postcards. Yeah, so one more thing, I just want to make sure that people understand. Okay. Kappa makes that brittle, clear gel. Yep. Iota makes the opaque, soft gel. Lambda is a thickener used for dairy, you know, soy or nut milks, and then with you know something like the vegan gelatin, or if you wanted to make your own you know kind of blend, you want to take the Kappa and Iota, you can mm -hmm. get a best of both worlds between that you know yep. brittle and soft. So you can really test out and do things on your own. I've never tested every single ratio of these, but you guys can try. Right. And then you can send me stuff, and then we can talk about it together. Absolutely. And before we wrap up, I just kind of want to we're gonna do like a little mini lightning round of a couple of common questions that we do get about carotene. 
So we're gonna just hit Scott with them real quick. So the first one that we, we get regular inquiries about, which is that people will buy carrageenan from other places. Yes. And uh, they, they will be brown. So they will be like, why is the carrageenan that I already have brown, but the one that I got from you is white? So that is a very common question that we get here. So. The reason why it's brown is it's just a less refined product. So there's more, you know, uh, impurities in it. Yep. And if you're going to use that, you may have to use more because those impurities take up space and weight. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely suggest uh, ours is a very refined. It's it's almost completely white, you know, perfect white, mm -hmm. slightly off. But if you use ours, you're going to have to use less and you may not get uh, an off color or an off flavor from yeah. the Yeah, and yeah. also a more consistent gelling strength yes. as well, yes. I think. Um, and then the other big question and kind of the controversy about carrageenan <laughs> is that some people think it's carcinogenic and, you know, there's a lot of brouhaha about it, but what's, what's really going on there? So the, the one, carrageenan makes, uh, as we see, we have three here mm -hmm. and then a blend uh, of our three mm -hmm. or our two, um, whatever it happens to be, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's proprietary. Yeah, it's a secret. Uh, but. There's so many different types of it, and the one that people found uh, could be, could be is, is the key, is a degraded quality of carrageenan. So that is one that, you know, someone wrote, could be uh, carcinogenic, and then everyone, you know, they saw carrageenan and they assumed it's every single type. Mm -hmm. and that, that's just not true. Yeah, so it's important when you're looking for different f ingredients like these, you have to make sure they're food grade, because some of these products, you know, there are versions of them that are industrial grade. Yes. And that's fine for industrial purposes, but you don't want to be putting that into your body, right? Correct. So an easy comparison is like, we sell calcium chloride. You can get calcium chloride at Home Depot to spray on your driveway, but you're not <laughs> going to you want to use that for spherification. Yeah. So it's kind of like that in a sense, you know, like they're not all created equal just because their names are the same. So well, hopefully that addresses that. And if you do have any more questions, um, actually Chef Sky on his website has a wonderful article where he goes into a lot more in depth about carrageenan and and the myths behind it. So I recommend checking out his website if you are curious more about, you know, about this issue. Yeah, and you should be able to find that in the, uh, mm -hmm. the information below. So, mm -hmm. great. Yeah, so I guess that wraps it up for us for the carrageenan and Primer. Hope you enjoyed it. Get all our recipes online. And from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garrett. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want these great recipes and these awesome ingredients, first you're gonna to have to like, comment, and subscribe. And then you're gonna to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you can find those awesome recipes and you can ask a chef. And to get these great ingredients, go to modernistpantry.com. And until next time, we'll be here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen helping you transform food.